positive territory into negative territory in the end, closing down about eight tenths of a percent. That's right. The market wasn't too happy with the result. Uh, ended down about eight tenths of a percent after trading in positive territory. Uh, the results came out. They were pretty mixed, really. Um, they, the press release, as usual, sort of talked it up, stating in year-on-year -year terms, saying iron ore production was up 10 percent year-on-year. But if you look at the iron ore production compared to fourth quarter 2011, that actually fell. Um, shipments were lower. They cited weather conditions for that. Um, certainly, it pr there was more production that weather ten uh, looks like it affected shipments more than it did production in their mm. iron ore operations. Um, copper continued to struggle a little bit. It was down 18%. So at their Kennecott, Utah copper operation, they saw lower grades and continued Escondida copper problems. Uh, the market sort of already was aware of this, but uh, they were not too good either. Um, coal were both up, thermal and coking coal, while um, aluminium 9% lower, alumina was 13% uh, higher on year. Uh, we saw comments from uh, Rio sort of last week uh, around shareholders concerns about capital capital expenditure capital costs and um, the CEO of iron ore stated that the company is aware of this and they're continually reviewing this but it does look like they probably push will push towards that expansion to 353 million tons per annum of iron ore production in Western Australia by 2015 um, because really iron ore margins and rate of returns uh, sort of at the moment they're just too good to turn down uh, to not expand out to that kind of level uh, now, over 80 per cent of Rio's earnings do come from iron ore, so it is a massive part of their business. That's why uh, that part of the production it's an iron results... It's player, Tim, let's be honest. 80 per cent of its earnings, the thing's almost a pure iron ore play, isn't it? Well, it is. Uh, I mean, but if you look at some of the, uh, the purchases it made, you look at Alcan, which it bought at the top of the cycle, that actually accounts for 41 of operating assets. So you look at the size of some of their assets, that particular section of their business only generates around 3% of underlying earnings. So you can see that a relatively small amount of net operating assets generate a huge amount of underlying earnings. So yes, it is pretty much a iron ore producer, and it is one of the very, it's one of the biggest uh, iron ore producers in the world. Um, so that result is why um, iron ore is so important to the company and why it was watched so closely by the market. Mike Long, um, some interesting movements obviously in terms of their, their Nixon uh, assets uh, bringing in some other, other owners. Look, your thoughts on that and, and how did the market react? Probably largely expected by the market as they had announced this sale previously in February when they were doing that strategic review. Um, this is to sell half of their Nixon accessory brand. Uh, it's for around $274 million US. Uh, this will be counted in their full year result as a one off gain in June this year. Uh, but this is part of an initiative to turn Billabong around. We're seeing uh, them closing 100 to 150 stores. Uh, they're cutting a, a cost by about $30 million. Uh, they're going to cut their dividend ratio to 25%. So uh, they're looking to turn this company around, and these initiatives, uh, these initiatives were taken as a positive by the market. We saw the share price jump about 45% on that day back in February that they completed this initiative. Uh, there are a few issues remaining. Obviously, the retail environment, uh, cautious uh, spending, as well as uh, uh, high discounting at retailers at the moment. Um, probably the execution of the $30 million cost restructure, uh, restructure is uh, questionable. Um, gearing ratio at the moment is probably okay, but they do have around $165 million in debt uh, maturing over the next four years or so. Um, on a positive note with this news, uh, we did see a recent takeover bid from the private equity firm TPG for $3 a share on Billabong. This sale of the half of the Nixon brand probably won't take away any of the attractiveness of Billabong as a takeover target for private equity players.